Hi, welcome to the next chapter, Basic Network Concepts. Let's look at the forward. To understand security technologies, we first need to learn about the basic network concepts such as the basic communication principles, network components, um, such as the, um, the routers, the switchers, um, common network protocols, yeah, such as the ICMP, ARP, or maybe some of the routing protocols like OSPF. So with knowledge of these basic concepts, we can better understand the network security threats and also how to deploy a good security defense policy. Objective. Upon completing this course, we should be able to learn about to describe the working principle of TCPIP protocols and also to describe the working principles of some of the common protocols and also to describe the possible security threats to the common protocols. So these are the two topics, TCPIP architecture, the common network protocols. Right, so let's look at the architecture of a typical campus network um, of any uh, companies. Um, so basically we have uh, like uh, small companies, small and medium size of companies and also we have uh, large uh, enterprises, organizations such as uh, universities or maybe uh, big hospitals and uh, maybe some government sectors. Alright, so, um, so here we have the different types of layers. So first we have the access layer. Now access layer is the layer where all these network components or the network devices are the one that connects directly to the uh, to user okay or maybe to some other uh, peripherals such as printers uh, connect to laptops connect to surveillance camera uh, connect to the um, um, television smart IT uh, smart television and etc etc so this is the access layer and the second layer we have is called the aggregation layer. So all the traffic from the access layer will then go up to the aggregation layer. So at the aggregation layer, this is where we can uh, apply some of the uh, access control lists or some permission control. Uh, you know which traffic uh, permit uh, can be can be passed through or which traffic are uh, denied to pass through. And uh, aggregation layer is the typical layer that we apply. Uh, routing protocol as well right so and after that all the traffic will then pass to the uh, core layer now the core layer the main function of the core layer is to carry huge amount of traffic uh, all the traffic um, from the organization that probably needs to go out to internet or connect to another network which is uh, maybe to uh, remote branches or maybe to uh, uh, headquarters on uh, another different site right so uh, in between we have uh, switchers and we need to go through some firewall layers and then to go through the egress zone which is uh, the uh, routers that typically provided by the uh, service provider or it could be uh, some routers which is uh, set up by the own uh, the company itself right so um, first we need to talk about the OSI model um, so the reason we need to learn about OSI is basically to understand uh, what is the objective of the OSI model the design principles of the OSI layer and also the advantages now we will talk about the advantages on why we need to learn about the OSI layer now first of all OSI actually stands for open system interconnect reference model and this is actually the uh, uh, standard which is defined by the International uh, Organization of Standardization, which is what we call ISO in short. Okay, so let's look at these uh, seven layers. So from the bottom, we have physical layer, and then after that, followed by data link layer. And then the third layer is called the network layer. And then we have transport layers, session layers, presentation layers and also the application layer at the last layer. First of all, we have uh, we divide this into the bottom four layers and then we have the uh, upper three layers. 
so the bottom three uh, the bottom four layers are the physical data network and transport okay and uh, before we go into the function let's talk about the uh, the unit that we normally refers them to at the physical layer we typically refer them as a bit okay so the reason we call them bits is because uh, at this layer they deal with um, the 0 1 1 0 the bits information how they transmit the bit from one source to a destination using the 0 1 0 so that's why we call it bits and the next layer is called the frame okay so frame includes some of the information about what is the source address destination address and how do they connect to the physical layer which is uh, either connect uh, with the wired uh, different type of uh, speed they need to negotiate or maybe in terms of wireless uh, WLAN Wi-Fi they also need to negotiate so this is a layer which define all the uh, um, we call it the data link layer so uh, then the next layer is called the packet okay so any uh, any layer that has the IP address for example IP address uh, layer uh, source that's in destination IP address uh, we call them as a, a packet layer okay then we have a segment we want to transfer a big file uh, so and uh, this one big file will then be uh, segmentized into multiple segments and each segment will actually carry uh, the the segment uh, sequence number and so that from the source when it's sent to destination uh, it regardless of which sequence that arrives first and uh, by looking at the sequence number the receiver will know how to reassemble all the packet especially a big uh, file example and then uh, we have the session layer uh, PD we call it the uh, protocol data unit which contain the header uh, information about PDU and then we have the presentation layer uh, we call it the presentation PDU protocol data unit and also with the finally we have the application protocol data unit now the function again let's just recap uh, physical layer uh, the main function is to transmit bits okay so it, it could be wired let's say for example uh, the, the, the transmission go through uh, a typical Ethernet Cat5 cable, or maybe the Cat6 cable, or maybe through a fiber channel cables. Uh, so this is a, a kind of form of transmitting the bits, or it could be wireless. Right. So depend on the radio frequency. Uh, maybe the typical wireless standard that we have today is like the 2.4 gigahertz and also the 5 gigahertz. Uh, so the second layer is actually to provide the media access and also the link management. So which I just mentioned this uh, earlier like for example they, they need to negotiate for the uh, uh, the, the maximum uh, frame size that can be transmit from one source to a destination they need to negotiate uh, they need to negotiate the speed they need to know uh, the source address and also the destination of the physical hardware um, the third layer here is to, to perform the addressing and also routing okay, this is the layer uh, let's say for example we have an IP address uh, so the uh, the IP address the source and the destination can actually tra travel uh, a further distance okay which is uh, anywhere around internet example okay so because of the addressing and also the routing mechanism that allows the, the address that can be transmitted across the, uh, across the globe okay um, as opposed to layer 2 uh, this kind of addressing is only good for uh, for a, a, a short distance, a limited area. And after that, we have the uh, transport layer. We call it the end-to-end -end connection for hosts. So this is actually uh, the layer that responsible from uh, a host, for example, like a PC that connects to a web server. Now the session layer is to maintain, establish, and also to manage session. So uh, this is actually more than just host to host because uh, when we connect to one uh, server, uh, we could actually establish multiple session. So session layer is the one that handle which session is for oh, for which traffic. Now layer six presentation layer, uh, this layer actually responsible 
for the compression for example from the source holes they actually compress some data and then at the uh, when arrive the destination the destination will actually decompress the data or maybe for encryption uh, the source encrypts the data the destination will, re will decrypt the data this is the information for them to able to uh, uh, to communicate final the layer is actually a communication between application and also to the layer which interact with a human being like Earth will understand the application layer for example in uh, Outlook Microsoft Outlook is, is for an application layer kind of software that allows us to uh, write email and to read email as a platform okay so this is actually the peer layer communication so peer-to-peer um, so every layer they actually tend to talk to each layer so because only this layer and this layer from the sending layer and the receiving layer they actually understand uh, what is actually happening okay so for example the uh, physical layer they deal with only bits to bits right and then uh, at the data link layer uh, from the bits they actually convert into frame uh, so um, so from, from a physical point of view they don't care what kind of frame is, is transmitted all they care is actually just to sending uh, the zero one uh, one zero to the opposite so this is the, the the main objective of of the physical layer function right example like uh, a network layer so a uh, network layer in charge of the IP address right so from again from a physical layer point of view they don't actually know about okay why I need to send this to this first router and then from the second from the first router need to send to the second router because everything is handled by the intelligence of the upper layer okay so the lower layer the main job is actually to transmit the information from one point to the next point and then from this physical layer let's say they have another router and they actually will carry the traffic to the next router by sending the bits okay and so each and every layer they communicate with uh, uh, they can only be understood by the receiving or maybe the sending uh, host. So the mapping between the CCPIP and the OSI layer. There's another type of uh, uh, protocol stack is what we call the uh, TCPIP uh, protocol stack. Okay. Um, so the TCPIP protocol stack has a simpler hierarchical design and a clear mapping relationship with the OSI layer. OSI layer was created not actually because of the TCP IP protocol. Now in the past we have so many different types of uh, uh, networking standards. Uh, for example uh, the one that came out by the uh, Novell. Alright so they actually created something called the IPX and the XPX uh, kind of protocol uh, to communicate you know uh, and uh, all these protocol also have to conform with the OSI and also for example like Apple uh, they came out something called the Apple talk right this is also another kind of a uh, communication protocol between the Apple and the Apple machine and uh, they also conform with the uh, OSI layer okay and uh, so we have another group of people that actually created the TCP IP layer and uh, so this is the layer uh, uh, where TCPIP they try to um, simplify so then we have like four layers instead of seven layers and for example the uh, network access layer is actually a combination of the uh, data link and the physical layer uh, internet layer here refers to the uh, network layer and the internet layer here also refers to the IP uh, header layer the transport layer is the same transport layer and the application layer will actually is a combination of the three uh, upper layer application presentation equals to the application layer right so let's look at the functionality of the TCPIP each of, of each of the layer All right so example of the network access layer we have the, the most commonly uh, uh, the one that we familiar standards called the Ethernet standards and then we have the 802.3 standards, uh, PPP standards, yeah, point-to-point -point protocol, high, uh, high data link uh, control protocol, and also we have the frame relays. So these are actually some of the example of the network access layer. And uh, the main function here is actually 
uh, to perform uh, the physical media access and also to transmit the information, uh, the binary information, the bits information from one uh, equipment to another equipment or maybe from one device to another device. So this is about physical stuff. Okay, so let me just give you one example. Uh, let's assume that we have a PC here that actually transmit uh, something to try to connect to internet and this is actually go through uh, the um, a router at home and then this router is actually connected by a, a modem okay and this modem is actually then connect via serial link uh, to the uh, service provider uh, equipment okay so here they use this PPP protocol and here we use the Ethernet protocol and then from the provider uh, they probably will connect this the, in, uh, the connection uh, into the frame relay uh, network and from the frame relay network, they, oh, they then connect to uh, maybe via serial link or maybe via Ethernet. Uh, maybe there's another conversion that converts into Ethernet and then back to the uh, a server. Okay, so this is actually uh, the uh, we call it the physical layer uh, communication. But from a user perspective, they don't actually need to worry about the physical layer. Okay. Like for example, Ethernet, how they talk to each other, like PPP, how they carry the traffic, how they convert the traffic, like frame relay, how they convert the, the frame into the small cell and to transmit the information. Everything is actually transparent to a user point of view. From a user point of view, what we are concerned is actually the IP. Right? For example, this is for addressing. Why? Because uh, we, uh, we, when talking about the TCP IP, uh, every communication uh, we actually we actually recognize by the source IP address to the destination IP. For example, this is a web server. This is a web browser. You know, we can actually uh, open up the web browser and type in the IP address of the uh, uh, destination. Okay, and uh, at this layer, we have also a couple of uh, important protocols that actually to help the TCP/IP to be um, more efficient and also for troubleshooting purpose. Uh, for example, like the ARP uh, address resolution address resolution protocol, and also we have something called the reverse up reverse address res resolution protocol. And uh, later we will also cover a little bit of the concept of the ICMP and also the IGMP. At the trans at the transport layer, we have the these two uh, the most uh, uh, popular uh, different types of uh, transport uh, protocol. Uh, one is called the TCP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and the second type is called the UDP, which stands for User uh, Datagram Protocol. Okay, so the, the key difference between the TCP and the UDP is that, is that uh, TCP actually provides uh, what we call the uh, Connection Oriented Communication Services. Okay. Uh, so the reason why we call the uh, connection oriented is because that every packet that is sent over TCP protocol uh, we actually have the uh, uh, the sequence number and also the acknowledgement number uh, that needs to be acknowledged by the uh, the receiver so when the receiver receives the all the sequence then the, only the uh, the communication will consider uh, successful. If, for example, if the receiver doesn't receive one of the sequence, then the receiver can actually request from the sender that, hey, I missed out one of the sequence, can you please resend the packet to me? And therefore, TCP is actually what we call connection oriented and sometimes also known as a more reliable uh, transmission protocol. But however, TCP suffers uh, uh, some sort of delay, okay? And also the uh, uh, in order to transmit uh, live streaming kind of a packet, uh, TCP actually is not the uh, the most ideal uh, mechanism. So that this is the reason why uh, the TCP/IP uh, uh, the standards they came up with another called the UDP. So UDP stands for again User Data Game Data Gram Protocol. This is actually good for to to send unreliable uh, transmission. So, which means, for example, like the live streaming uh, kind of a video uh, footage, video streaming, where the video stream uh, will actually be sent from the 
server to the user unstoppable okay there is no way that you can actually ask the server to hey can you please resend the last 10 seconds of the video which I actually missed out <laughs> you know so UDP actually it doesn't work this way okay so UDP is actually good for for example like Skype communication where you want to make a conversation with another party uh, video chatting you know so UDP is actually uh, is actually meant for that okay uh, then finally we have the application layer where we will discuss some of the protocols uh, in the next few slides for example HTTP for web uh, browsing purpose telnet you know for the remote uh, access uh, to devices to type some commands FTP for file transfer TFTP same thing for file transfer as well and also we have the DNS for name resolution All right, so next we look at the encapsulation and the decapsulation process of the TCP IP. So this is a sender, okay? So let's say, for example, when the sender tries to send something, like say, for example, an email message. So this is actually called the user data. So in the user data, uh, we type in hi, uh, then followed by hi any, for example. Then say, how do you do, blah, blah, blah. blah. Da, 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 and then best regards and from uh, Linus for example so this is the user data now the user data will then be encapsulated with an application header okay so let's say for example in this case will be the email header so the email header will then be transmit to the next header the next layer which is called the transport layer right because this email will have to be sent to uh, a certain services for example like SMTP okay so if you want to send something to SMTP we need to send to TCP port number 25 for example okay and then after that the uh, uh, so this is actually just a port number and then after that they will send to the next layer which is the IP layer and this is the layer where they will actually start query okay if I want to send some uh, message from Gmail to let's say for example outlook.com so they need to find out which server is in charge for the outlook.com so this is where the DNS will comes in and after that the DNS will give you the IP address of the destination IP address of the actual SMTP server so this is the header this is the layer where they actually includes what's the source IP and what is the destination IP okay then after that they will go to the next layer which is the network access layer and this is a layer where they will actually include the physical MAC information the source hardware information and also the destination hardware information now this is the, the layer that I mentioned earlier so like for example a sender if you want to send something to recipients which is across the internet for example this is a router and then the router will then connect to another router another router will then connect to another router before they go into the service provider cloud and then from service provider cloud they will then connect to maybe a router and then maybe through a firewall okay a firewall then to a router and then to the switch and then after that to the recipients example okay so the uh, physical layer is the layer where they actually so physical layer is actually the layer where they will actually include uh, what is the uh, source and what is the destination of the hardware address okay so after this process they will actually go through the router and the router will actually reconfigure what is the source and to the destination of the of the hardware okay and then same thing for the next router they will actually configure what's the source and what's the destination and this is actually done for this layer but for the IP layer they actually will not touch this layer okay the source IP will remain as this IP the source IP and the destination IP will remain as the same destination IP okay so when the receiver okay when the receiver receive on this side so the receiver will perform what we call the decapsulation process 
which actually it will take out layer by layer. First of all, it will receive all the binaries and then from the network layer, they will reconstruct back everything into a frame. If you still remember frame. So from the frame, they analyze what is the uh, destination address, the hardware address, which is the MAC address in this case. So if, if the recipient, uh, recipients uh, sees the uh, hardware address, which is actually not meant for him or, or the machine, then the machine itself will reject. Right? So let's assume that the, uh, the, MAC, uh, the MAC address is actually meant for this machine. So it will, after that, will decapsulate, they will remove the Ethernet header, and after that, they'll open up the IP Internet layer, and they will look at the uh, destination IP, and then if the destination IP is, yes, it's meant for him, oh, sorry, the machine, and then it will actually proceed to the next layer. So the transport layer is the one that, you know, will take care about the, uh, uh, the, the port numbers, okay? After that, they will decapsulate, to the application layer and then finally uh, the recipients were able to read the content of this message okay so if the recipients uh, decided to reply the message then the whole process will happen uh, at the reverse direction okay all right so this is the uh, quintuple um, information which is very important uh, in terms of uh, when we study the uh, HCIA security course. The reason is because that uh, this quintuple information uh, is actually uh, very important when we perform a configuration on a firewall site. Okay, so uh, this quintuple information are the source IP addresses the destination IP addresses, the per call number, okay, which is usually in the uh, uh, IP header, the uh, source port, and also the destination port. So here are some examples. Um, so IP packet, yeah, we mentioned about the source address. For example, source address could be uh, 192.168.1.1. The destination it could be 10.1.1.8 so this is what we call the source to destination IP address the per call is something like so if somebody were to send the ping packet so the ICMP packet will be sent out and IP pack, ICMP packet is actually a value of per call number one if somebody send a TCP packet so the, the value will be six if somebody send a UDP packet the value will be 17 okay then after that they will also have to mention the source port and also the destination port uh, depends on which direction and these are actually some of the common port numbers used by our uh, popular services such as HTTP port 80 FTP users port 20 21 telnet 23 SNTP port 25 DNS 53, TFTP 69, and also SNMP users 161 and also 162. 